Jackson had given to him. I said, but Sheriff, I got to protect you. He says, I will give you a secret dharma that you can use to protect. I thought, wow. From the beginning, where the first day before we began at uh, Gold Wheel Monastery in L.A., Master Hua told him, okay, as Dharma protector, he said, you may not use your fists or your feet. You may not use your martial arts. And Marty's a black belt in Taekwondo and other things. He said, as soon as you throw the first punch or the first kick, you are no longer my disciple. And so Marty had actually considered putting a hatchet. No, I did. And he had a hatchet. I had an axe. In his, in his bag. Uh, when we were planning this, we were in the monastery in the back. I was still a layman. He was a monk. So my idea of this pilgrimage is, you know, something out of, uh, you know, living in the wild, back to nature. And so I go on and get all this really, really good sleeping bags and the latest titanium cooking ware with the stove and all this sort of things. And I bring it in and we're in the back room and we're planning and Hung Shui's going, oh, that looks good. That's great. You know, it's good. And then Master Wa comes in and he looks at it. What are you doing? Well, we're getting ready for the pilgrimage. He says, no, nah, you should take some, take anything that nobody wants. Don't take anything that anybody would even turn an eye second. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So we did got all this great stuff. I would say within the fourth week of the pilgrimage, it was all gone. So every, all those nice things that we got were completely stolen. So that was one instruction. We didn't listen to and learn the hard way. But then the other instruction, I thought, oh, Hung sure, you know, the holy monk is going to make this vow. And I, Go Ting, will be his Dharma protector. You know, and I will use my martial arts to save him from all these villains that descend, you know, like Xuanzan and Monkey. Here we go. <laughs> you know? And then... And I think, well, you know, I got my martial arts, but I should have a weapon too. And so in the monastery, there was this nice little ax. And uh, I thought, well, just in case, because if I just hold that, it'll threaten the hell's angels away, right? <laughs> and so we're ready to go out the door, and the master was says, hmm, where are you going? Where are you going? No, he said, give me the ax. <laughs> I said, what ax? <laughs> he said, you know what ax. You can't. Blah, 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 blah. Nope. Can't go out the door. I take out the axe and I give it to him. I said, but Sheriff, I got to protect you. He says, I will give you a secret dharma that you can use to protect. I thought, wow, here's the kung fu movie. You're now, grasshopper, I'm going to give you the secret. I thought, this is classic. The Chinese master transmitting to me the secret iron fist or one finger, da da da. He says, it's called the four unlimited minds. I thought, yeah, that's a very clever expression, you know, like the lotus flower. And wow. And he says, and I said, what are they, Master? And he says, kindness, compassion, joy, and equanimity. I go, what? I'm not sure it's translated. I said, maybe you got it wrong. <laughs> it's fist, hand, and, you know, kindness, compassion, joy, and equanimity. He said, if you use those four unlimited minds, you will never be in danger and nothing will happen. If you don't use those, I can't vouch for you. And then he said, if you... Down in L.A., just, be, just as we were about to go out the door for the very beginning... First day, he said, as soon as you throw the first fist or the first kick, the first foot, he said, you're no longer my disciple on the spot. You may not use those. He said, furthermore, if you can use those four power tools that I gave you, nobody can touch you. And of course, I can see Marty's going, no, no. And then Sherpa turns to me and says, well, he says, on this trip, this time, you're not going to get enlightened. But what you write may have the power to cause all kinds of people to fa putishin, to bring forth the resolve for Bodhi. And of course, I didn't hear the second part of that sentence. All I heard was, you're not going to get enlightened on this trip. I was like, sure who? Where what? He said, you must write. He said, any day, if you don't put your clothes on, that's not important. If you don't write, that's important. You must write every single day. Any day that you don't eat, that's not important. But you must write every day. Do you understand? It's like, okay, Shervo. There 
was a one time in Big Sur when this this guy were isolated part of Big Sur near the lighthouse, and this jeep pulls up, an open top jeep, and this guy, uh, I'm I'm, my job is not to look around, right? I'm I'm just to keep bowing, and so this guy pulls up, and I hear this ha 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 ha, this this crazy laugh, and. Uh, this guy has got a gun pointed at my head behind me, standing up in his Jeep. And Marty goes up, hi, how you doing? Hi, we're Buddhist monks here making a pilgrimage for world peace. From Los Angeles, the city of 10,000 Buddhas, would you like a flyer? <laughs> and this guy is like, nah, uncocks his gun, puts it, drives away. Actually, it was, it was a 45. I knew that much. And he just, he was very stern. He just held it like that just right at me and i'm thinking okay the foreign limited minds let's see what are they <laughs> and what i actually did was i put my palms together and did a half bow to him and at that he kind of looked at me and then he released it put it in and just drove off in his jeep yeah yeah, yeah. so how do you explain something like that there was nobody around it would have been you know uh easy to, to wipe out the two monks.